Another week, another airplane versus car versus high-speed rail race. But this time, we're north of the border, going from Toronto to Montreal. Come along for the ride and find out who crosses the finish line first. This is City Nerd. Subscribe for weekly content on cities and transportation. Lots of transit and high-speed rail, lots of top 10 lists, and some curveballs every now and then to keep you on your toes. So my videos on high-speed rail to this point have really just focused on the US, but I do think there are great opportunities in our neighboring countries up north and down south. So today I'm gonna dive into what service between Canada's two largest cities could look like. And I'm gonna use a real world example to show how high-speed rail would change the travel equation between Toronto and Montreal. So quickly, mostly for the US audience, let's put these two cities in perspective. When we're talking about city size for high-speed rail, I like to use combined statistical area for population, which is sort of a US specific terminology, but it tends to include interrelated urban areas within like a 30 or 40 mile radius. So for Toronto, I would include Hamilton and Oshawa in this. So you're talking about 7.8 million people, which would place it eighth in the US just behind Dallas. For Montreal, you could include St. Hyacinth and Joliet. Don't even tell me if I'm mispronouncing it. And those don't add a lot, but it gets you to about 4.5 million, which would put you at number 15 in the US, just behind Phoenix. So I figured the distance of a high-speed rail connection between Toronto and Montreal to be about 350 miles. So you're a bit on the high side of that too long to drive, too short to fly curve, but it's a pretty good distance for high-speed rail. Now, before we get too much further, let's acknowledge the reality of where Canada is on high-speed rail. Unlike, say, California and Texas, there is no plan for true high-speed rail between Toronto and Montreal. What there is is a high er speed rail plan, higher speed than the existing service, which is like over five hours between the two cities. So I don't know, that's kind of a low bar. But what is proposed right now is some new routing to the north on dedicated track that improves speed and reliability and gets the runtime down to three hours, 45 minutes. I'll include links in the description so you can read about it. And also today's video is a twist on a viewer suggested topic that came from Simon EH. And the request was kind of to look at this high frequency rail proposal, but to be honest, Honest, spending time thinking about and analyzing sort of, I don't know, uninspiring incrementalist stuff that's politically feasible. That's sort of what I do at my day job, and it's not really what I want to be doing with these videos. So instead, I'm going to assume a very typical high-speed rail operation between Toronto and Montreal, the kind of service that region really deserves, and we're going to run with that. Okay, enough background. Here's what we're doing today. I'm going to give you a completely imaginary scenario, not grounded in any sort of reality whatsoever. Tonight is game seven of the Stanley Cup Eastern Conference Finals. Is this still like the Wales Cup? I can't even keep it straight. Anyway, game seven, the Toronto Maple Leafs are facing the Montreal Canadiens at 7 p.m at Bell Center in Montreal. I mean this is already far-fetched right? But stay with me, our three race participants Charles, Alex, and Trina all live in Greater Toronto slash Hamilton slash Oshawa, and they're all enormous Leafs fans. So this is gonna be a little different from my Texas video in that our three contestants don't know each other. They all live in different parts of the Toronto area, but each one of them simultaneously gets a call from a friend in Montreal at four o'clock p.m. saying, hey, Turns out I have an extra ticket available for tonight's game. So this is the question. Can you hang up the phone at 4 p.m. in Toronto and be at Bell Center by 7 p.m.? Just to be clear about the magnitude of importance here, the Leafs have not been to a Stanley Cup since 1967 when they beat the Canadians and won it all in the final. Last note before we get started, for the Texas and California videos I did, there was documentation telling me what kind of run times and frequencies to expect, and Canada just isn't there yet. It's frustrating, but I made my own assumptions, which we'll kind of talk through when we get there. Okay, enough with preliminaries, let's get into it. Time point 4 p.m., let's meet our participants. Charles is in Oshawa out at the eastern edge of 
the greater Toronto area. He's gonna get in his car and take Highway 401. And because of where he is, he's gonna be missing all of the worst traffic coming out of Toronto. By the way, how's this for a negative trivia I learned while researching this video? Highway 401 through Toronto is apparently the busiest highway in North America. For that matter, if you Google busiest freeway in the world, guess what comes up? So I did a little poking around to try to disprove this. I mean, I just assumed there are freeways in like LA or Houston or Atlanta that are busier, but no success yet. Looking at the Ontario provincial government data, the epicenter appears to be this segment between Highway 400 and Weston Road in North York, which carried over 400,000 annual average daily traffic in 2016. Anyway, if you can find me something with higher AADT, leave it down in the comments. I'd be extremely curious. Alex is in Bathurst Key where he's working from home today, and he is gonna fly into Montreal. So if you know Toronto at all, you know I'm putting Charles and Alex in absolutely optimal locations for the modes of travel they're gonna use. I mean, I am giving them every advantage possible in this race. There's a 515 flight, Air Canada Flight 7972 out of Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport going into Montreal Trudeau International. It would be pretty much impossible to catch this flight from anywhere else in the Toronto area other than this very small neighborhood where you can walk through an underwater tunnel to the airport. Anyway, if you've flown out of YTZ, let me know if this passes the smell test. Could you really walk and show up at 4.15, an hour before the flight? Anyway, everything really has to go right for Alex to catch this flight. And if it doesn't work out, he has to go out to to catch a six o'clock flight, if it's even worth it, or wait for a later flight at YTZ. If he does that, he loses this race by a landslide. Trina works in downtown Toronto and she's gonna catch a high-speed train out of Union Station at 4.30. And this is an imaginary high-speed rail system, but I'm gonna assume they're running on the half hour in peak times, which would be pretty reasonable for a city pair of this size. And one key thing for this scenario is I'm assuming that it's straightforward to buy your plane or your train ticket on your phone while you're walking to the airport or the station, which you may be thinking, if it's game seven in Montreal, and eh, there's probably not gonna be seats available on that train or on the plane, which I would just say, yeah, you're taking this all way too literally. And one more thing, with high-speed rail, there's no security line and boarding is lightning quick. You can show up at the last minute and still get on. So really, Trina can work pretty much anywhere downtown and be at the station in time. So the train is much more kind of geographically forgiving in this scenario. Time point, five o'clock PM. Charles is sailing on through the Brighton Highway 26 interchange area, kind of totally oblivious to how futile his whole journey is. Alex has boarded the plane at Toronto City Airport and the doors are about to close. Trina was on that 4.30 train and she's about 60 to 70 miles out now, passing by Peterborough. So this is probably a good time to talk about what I'm assuming for high-speed rail. I looked at a couple city pairs in Europe where the distance is comparable, just to be able to get an idea of the travel time you should be able to achieve. The first is Madrid to Barcelona. Madrid is about 6.5 million in the metro area and Barcelona is around 5.5. So the city sizes are really in line with Toronto and Montreal. And the distance is actually a bit longer, like 386 miles. So the direct Ave high-speed rail train makes that run in two hours, 30 minutes. And it runs on the half hour or sometimes better. The other comp is Paris to Bordeaux. Paris is bigger, it's like 12 million, but Bordeaux is just a little bit over 1 million. They're 340 miles apart and the TGV can make that run in about two hours eight minutes. It only runs about once an hour but you'd expect the frequency to be lower just because the gravity of that city pair is lower than Toronto Montreal. Anyway looking at those comps I'm thinking a Toronto Montreal service should be making that 350 mile run in about 220. Time point six o'clock p.m. Charles is still on Highway 401, passing through Kingston now. He's not even halfway to Montreal. Alex departed on time, so he's up in the air, about 200 miles out, just about as far as Ottawa. And Trina is leading the race. Two hours in, she's already east of Ottawa, just passing by the uh, Calypso theme water park. Totally awesome. And passing through Castleman, Ontario right now. I am assuming that the train is using the northern alignment that's proposed as part of the high frequency rail plan. And you know, we're focusing on pure travel time here, but remember that all three of our contestants 
bailed out of work at four o'clock p.m., which is, I don't know, pretty reasonable. But assuming kind of a normal office job, you might have an hour or two of work you still want to get done. Well, Trina has two hours and 20 minutes to work on the train and get caught up for the morning. And our other two travelers just don't really have that. So score another one for rail. So quick plug to say, if you enjoy explorations of kind of imaginary and not so imaginary North American high-speed rail systems or off the wall top 10 lists of transportation and city related stuff. Make sure you're subscribed and drop a like on today's video if you're so inclined. It all helps goose the algorithm and get more people into the conversation down in the comments, which by the way, I kind of really enjoy. I've got a pretty thoughtful group of viewers here. And as always, drop your topic suggestions down in the comments too. Okay, time point 7 p.m. Charles is around the Highway 416 interchange around Johnstown. Still pretty far out. He's got the radio on so he can follow the game until he gets there. Charles, this whole thing was just not a good idea. For Alex, Air Canada flight 7972 pulled into the gate at Montreal International at 628, right on schedule. You know, I said enough in my Texas video about how incredibly slow planes are to load and unload just because of the narrow aisle and having a single door. So I won't belabor it here. But let's say he gets off the plane at 640, which is probably being generous. And he's able to order a ride hail and get in the car by 6.55. So at seven o'clock, he's just leaving the airport and getting onto Highway 20. For Trina, the train pulled into Montreal Central Station at 6.50. She's off the train and out of the station in a couple minutes, which is another big advantage of the train over the plane. And now she has to order a ride hail or wait for a subway to take her to Bell Center. Oh wait, no she doesn't. Bell Center is like two blocks away. So if you watched my arenas video, you know Bell Center scored really well because of the location and how it's kind of tightly knit into the downtown grid. And this is also kind of one of the huge advantages of rail. Central location. I mean, a lot of the reasons you go to another city are downtown. If it's not a hockey game, it's an art exhibit at a museum, a conference at a hotel or a convention center, a symphony or an opera or a play, a corporate meeting at a downtown office. Or if your destination isn't downtown, the train station usually has great connections to the transit network so you can get where you need to go efficiently. It's not always true for air travel. So anyway, it's like a seven minute walk. Trina's at the arena at 7 p.m. She still needs to get through the entry queue and get to her seat. So she's missing a little bit of like starting lineups and O Canada. No disrespect. I actually kind of like that anthem. So anyway, puck's going to drop at 7.10. So she's right on time. All right, I'm done with time points. I'm just going to tell you how this all played out. For Charles, the decision to drive was quite tragic. He missed the whole game and the arena is completely cleared out. I mean, I guess he can go find some Leafs fans to drink with if they won or if they lost. But what's he gonna do? Drink and then get back on the 401? I don't think so. And the last thing, before we leave Charles, if he'd really thought about it, he'd have left his car at home, caught the 441 train from Oshawa Station back to Toronto Union Station, which would have got him in at 518. He could have taken the 530 high-speed rail to Montreal, and he would have been at Bell Center at 8 p.m. partway through the second period. Charles just doesn't think well under pressure though. For Alex, he had a 30 minute ride from the airport. So he gets to the arena at 7.25. He gets to his seat maybe 10 minutes later. So it's late in the first period by the time he sits down. So he did all right. Just not as well as Trina who got there in time for opening puck drop and got caught up on her work on the train. And that is your race result. Quick summary table. And I'm actually including the existing rail service, which has a 5.02 PM train from Toronto that gets you into Montreal at 10 13 p.m. so that wasn't gonna work at all and I'm including the proposed high frequency service which if it departed at 4 30 would have got you into Montreal at 8 15 and under that scenario Trina maybe gets there in the third period and probably leaves her wishing she had taken a flight instead and that is all I've got thanks for joining and we'll see you next week